Okay. Hi, good evening. Uh, welcome to the Weathersfield Library Board meeting. It's December 1st, 7 p.m. in Weathersfield. Um, and uh, thanks everybody for coming tonight. Um, we'll uh, start with public comment. I don't see any members of the public. Did you have any anything come in, Brooke? Yeah, no one is in the waiting room or has called in. And I, as of about five minutes ago, I had not received any email notifications or any US mail either. Okay, thank you. Um, so moving on, any additions or changes to the agenda? No? Okay, all right. Um, let's go to the approval of the minutes. The, uh, did everyone get the October 22nd, 2020? They were in the packet. Yes. Um, yeah. Is it the 22nd? 27. Mm -hmm. This says 22nd. It's the 27th. Oh, That's okay. The, the minutes are correct, aren't they? Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> let's check the date. It was <coughs> the 27th. Okay. So the minutes are correct. All right. Um, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. And uh, any discussion or anything? There's, Martha, there's one change that I believe we need to make is yep. Lila Mandor had actually resigned as of October 15th. Okay. So at that point in time on the 27th, she actually was no longer a library board member. Except I believe okay. that you remain a member of the board until a replacement is named. Okay. Can I jump in? Is, uh, is that possible? Oh, oh, yes, please. We did accept her resignation at the town council meeting. Um, I have to look and see which one, but her, she, we did um, officially yeah. accept her resignation at the council meeting. Would it have been her her resignation was dated the fifteenth? Was there one on the nineteenth, Amy, the, or the twenty sixth? We met on the sixteenth. What am I looking at here? Oh, I'm looking at wait. Yeah, October. so that would have been. Oh, we can take her off. I I just I, okay. yeah. We can take her off. Okay. Okay. All right. Good enough. Thank you. Um, and is anything else? So with that change, um, I have to go down the roll. Um, Amanda, we're all in favor of the Amanda. Yes. Yes. Uh, Hannah. Yes. Terry. Yes. Lori. Yeah. Yes. Mary. Terry <laughs> uh, Lori. Yes. And George. Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, now, uh, related to um, Lila resigning from the board, we um, are um, need to nominate a new secretary. Um, I believe we have one nomination. I don't know if we have others, but uh, do I have a nomination for secretary of the board? Yes, I am pleased to nominate Hannah Granfield as secretary. Is there a second for Hannah? Second. Okay. <laughs> Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Okay, uh, let's have a vote on <laughs> On Hannah, I'll start and I'll say yes to Hannah. Thank you, Hannah. Um, Hannah, <laughs> we'll let you go. Do I vote for myself? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't know you were going. Yes. Lori. Yes. George. Yes. Mary. Yeah. Terry. Yes. Amanda. Yes. Great. Okay. Thank you. And thank you very much, Hannah. Mm. So you can pick up your pencil and get going. <laughs> thank you, Hannah. Right to work. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. Um, and thank you to George, who served for many, many years many. As, yeah. our, as our secretary. I'm not sure how long, it, but uh, many, many years. You did a wonderful job. You kept great notes. And um, 
and uh, have been filling in as needed since then. So we appreciate it. So thanks, George. Okay. Uh, do we have a report from the Friends, Brooke? Uh, we, we do not, um, but you know, there, I know that, uh, Carolyn doesn't feel that she can participate in this type of setup. Um, but no, that, you know, I don't, I don't have anything. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Amy, town council report. Thank you. Um, the town council only met once uh, in between the last library board meetings. We did have a um, update on public with the um, Central Connecticut Health District after they received a proclamation for public health thank you day. Um, you know, uh, Charles Brown talked about the increased numbers and how it's impacting our schools, how it's impacting the town. Um, and I'm sure Brooke, you'll talk about how it's gonna, it may impact the library too. Um, so they're watching that. Um, there's so many cases right now, they're not able to manage all the contact tracing even. Um, so they're just, you know, he, he gave us an overview of all of that. Um, we also had a report from Peter Gillespie, our economic development um, director. It was a brief update. Um, and then when we got into council business, we did accept Layla's um, resignation. We appointed uh, Tony Hamicki as a full member to our planning and zoning board. Um, we approved, um, we authorized the town manager to apply for um, an application for a historic designation um, nomination for Keisha Farm for the barn there. Uh, what that does is it will allow us to look for grant money for that, for part of the Keisha Farm um, property, specifically the barn, if we um, are interested in that, if it receives that historic designation and it does not tie our hands, we, we are able to knock the barn down. If that is uh, what ends up being what uh, the committee and the public decide, we were happy to accept a DECD grant um, for 1.5 million total for the Walkett Hill Road um, reconstruction project and a Spring Street Pond and Dam project. Um, so we were happy to get that bond money to be able to do those two projects. Um, we also approved a Homeland Security grant, which is a, it's a memorandum, a, a memorandum of uh, agreement, and it's something we do annually. And we also uh, uh, had a rock salt bid, which is an annual bid for uh, winter time, so we can stock up our salt shed for the winter. We'll cross our fingers that we don't have an icy, snowy winter. Um, so that was our report. And I think this will be my last library board meeting. Um, I do not know who's replacing me on council yet. And I do not know who the new library board liaison will be yet. So um, I am anticipating somebody new will be assigned to all of you um, for your January meeting. But I've really enjoyed serving as liaison and working with Brooke and working with all of you. It's been um it's been a pleasure and I love the library. Um, my parents love it even more than I do and go every week and I love to get their input on all the good things that you guys are doing. So um, thank you for having me. Well, I was gonna, actually gonna start my report for the chair's report thanking you, Amy. Um, you have honestly, be, I don't know if everyone knows this, you are, you've been our liaison and you are obviously, you are a very strong advocate for us when you were the mayor, but you were a liaison for us before that too. So this is your second go around for us. Um, and you really have always been, um, you know, taken a great interest in our business and been a great advocate for us on the other side. So we appreciate it. And we know we can count on having a friend in Hartford now too. So that's great. And we're looking forward, you know, but we get, we have gotten great bipartisan support from um, council over the years for every year. And so um, we're really looking forward to meeting our new, our new council member as well as, um, as well as um, getting to know a, a, a new uh, liaison for the library board. So thank you very much for everything and good luck to you. Thank you. Um, so that was my first moving on to the chair's report. I did wanna share, we had a nice note from Polly Moon. Um, we had sent flowers after 
Um, Dan Silver had passed away. She wrote, uh, dear friends, thanks so much for the lovely flowers. Dan always had such a special love of the library and so enjoyed his stint on the board. So appreciate your thoughts, best wishes, Polly Moon. Um, Polly, of course, has been um, the library board chair herself and an active member of um, the Friends and so tremendous friends of, of the library. And then Lila had sent a nice note along just saying, um, I just wanna say thank you to all of you. I thoroughly enjoyed my years on the board. I enjoyed working with, this was to me and Brooke, you both and other members of the board. Thank you for having me and thank you for the work you continue to do. Of course, if you ever need help with anything, please feel free to call as there may be sometimes I can help with the project. Um, I look forward to seeing you all around town. So again, we're gonna miss her a lot. Um, and uh, I know she'll also continue to be a, a, a real friend to the library. Um, let me see. And uh, I think that's it. We have, I have a few more things as we get to the committee reports with setting up some dates for um, a couple of committees, but why don't we manage that as we get down to that? So Brooke, you are up. So if, oh my goodness, Dan Silver, what an advocate for intellectual freedom. Oh my, more so than me, if that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my, yes. He would have defended it bigger than me, if that's possible. Um, and, and Polly Moon actually was just in the library today. Um, so she's doing well. Um, the a big thanks to uh, Amy. Um, it is wonderful to have you at the state level and you and I need to meet so that we can chat offline about the state library um, of which the library board would prefer. I never attend a state library board meeting, which is probably a good thing um, but I feel like, you know, if given the correct information, Amy, you could be an advocate <laughs> for the public libraries of the state of Connecticut. Um, so yes, but uh, thank you for everything, Amy. Um, it is appreciated to have uh, the support um, uh, from town council and uh, you were a fantastic advocate for us. And um, I look towards your advocacy at the state level um, so that I don't have to go in. <laughs> Better if I don't. <laughs> Absolutely, Brooke. And um, Carrie Wood and I are actually setting up um, little uh, short, brief Zoom meetings with different department heads and stakeholders. And we would love to have one with you before the session opens to hear what your concerns are, what advocacy you'd like to see for um, public libraries. Yeah, that'd be great. And it, even if we could include the other, I would say quad town libraries, what, whichever ones that you and sure. Carrie represent would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, very um, good. That'd be great. Um, so again, thank you for all that you've done. Um, the phased reopening of the library continues. I'm just moving papers around here. Um, recently, I had um, Charles Brown come in um, and the director of the Central Connecticut Health District. I had him revisit the library. He's been in previously just to see if there was anything further that we could do, knowing that the numbers were going up um, with COVID. Um, and he had some minor suggestions that we are implementing um, and that we, you know, a big piece of advice is we should keep the numbers down in our, our building, the number of, of, of people in the building total, um, keep that down, which we've been able, that's been fine, that hasn't been a problem. Um, so far, we're looking good um, and we want to continue to to be open, we're currently open 35 hours a week. Um, and we think by remaining open, this is one of the best ways that we are able to provide service in a safe way for our staff and the public. Um, and we did open for, since the last meeting, we did open for Saturdays for a full day. So we're open on Saturdays, 10 to five. We did not open up on the Thursday nights. Um, I, I started to have some real concerns about expanding any further than we were already doing. Um, so I, I didn't move forward with that. 
Um, but right now we're open 35 hours a week and, and we feel like, you know, it's, it's, it's meeting the needs right now. We would like to be open more. Um, but again, we're doing the midday cleaning. Um, but anytime I can tick up the hours a little bit, I will. Uh, but right now that's going to be about it for the foreseeable future. And we're just hoping, you know, a vaccine comes out. Um, you know, we don't have a line out the door. Um, but so far it, it's been good and we don't want to pull back from anything. It's again, why we've been so slow and cautious. Um, I know uh, Rocky Hill in Berlin and the Quad Town, those of us in the, the Central Connecticut Health District, um, so Berlin Peck and uh, Rock, Rocky Hill um, are pretty much staying the same. There are some public libraries around the state that are starting to return to just curbside um, or just closing down completely. Um, Newington was open for two weeks um, so it was browsing by appointment and they opened up for two weeks and closed back down. Um, and that's a decision not made by the library director. My understanding is that's a decision made by the town manager. Um, so that's kind of where we are, you know, in terms of local, the local area. Um, does anybody have any questions about the phased reopening so far? Um, other things to report on, um, the recruitment process is underway uh, for the public services manager of the head of children's, Regina did retire. Um, and so that it's been posted. Um, we're now heading towards the first, you know, the next step of that process. So that's where we are with that. Um, the directors and officers insurance um, application we had initially submitted, and I had mentioned at the last um, board meeting, um, USI, who advises the town on insurance, um, came back and had us submit another application to a different company. Um, some of the terms, the expiring company Chubb, some of their terms had changed, some of their costs had changed. And um, this was gonna kind of keep us at our current coverage and keep the price low. The final amount was actually 935. So it did go up a little bit, but we budget every year about $1,000 for that. So it did come in um, just slightly under budget, but um, USI uh, felt we needed to, to switch up and I um, had meetings with uh, Mike O'Neill uh, regarding that. Um, so that's where we are with the DNO insurance. Um, a review of the financial statement, you should have all received it. It was dated 11-23, so just um, prior to the payroll um, of last week. And so yeah, we had to get this off um, as the people who work on this were actually going to be on vacation. And so um, it is dated 11-23. At the bottom, a payroll is about 40 grand, so it's about two percentage points. Um, and so we really are probably at this very moment in time, about 43% in the last week. Um, but this is where we were, we're on track, you know, for spending. Um, and that's, you know, just kind of where we are. So any questions about the financial report? Um, and you've all received um, pay, the page I email off um, of the sh two Schwab accounts, the Showman account, um, which lost a little bit, but it's gonna be up and down with the market till we authorize a, a withdrawal again. Um, and it's at 307, 8.79 and 41 cents. And so that was the end of October. When I receive the November statements, which should be in the next week, I will email that to you because our next board meeting isn't till the end of January. Um, so I will be sure to send off the November statements um, when I receive them. And then the other account, the what I call the library account, is at 157,000 and it's down um, 157,940 and 11 cents, and that's down a couple of uh, thousand dollars. Um, since the last statement. And again, these are dated October 31st, um, and I'm still waiting for the November uh, statement. Um, I think it would be good if, um, 
we met with FIA sometime in January as part of the finance committee, and it'll be the start of our, you know, you know, the, the really beginning of the library board um, in budget season. Um, so that might be a good time to check in with FIA and Andrew Salek. Any questions about those statements at all? Um, I have some statistics from the state library report. And so this is a report we submit every year. And just some uh, quick highlights. Um, the total, normally we're open 52 hours a week a year. Um, this last fiscal year, we were open 39 hours, and I'm sorry, 39 weeks a year. Um, and so we lost 13, we lost basically an entire quarter of not being open directly to the public. Um, we had 107,702 visitors. That's basically down 50,000 visitors from the previous fiscal year. You know, so we usually get like say 12,000 people a month. And so that, you know, um, but, but yeah. What was, that, what was that first number? So we were down 50,000, but what was the first number? Was 107,702. Thanks. And uh, the previous fiscal year was 157,110. And uh, Hannah, or George, whoever's taking notes at this point. <laughs> I hope Hannah is. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Hannah, um, I will be sure to um, include all of this because I'm just kind of, I don't want you to get caught up in this level of detail, but we'll make sure that we include anything I say in the minutes. Um, and thankfully it's being recorded as well. And I have it highlighted here on a document. Um, our number of but, public internet- Brooke, the, like with the visitors though, I mean, we have, we don't average, we average much higher during the summer, right? With summer, with kids home, summer reading. I mean, that's some of our, our best months are the yeah. summer. Well, so that's really- gotten, We would have gotten July. Yeah. It would have been the previous, would have, July was included. July is generally our busiest month. And so that's not, July 2020 isn't part of this particular report. However, we missed all class visits, every seventh grade visit, every, uh, I think the third graders come in. So there was a lot of foot traffic in the springtime. Yeah. And we do um, programming, we're wrapping up um, programming at that point to get ready for summer reading where there's a lot of foot traffic. Um, that just didn't obviously materialize. Um, so yeah, does that answer your question a little bit? More? Yeah, just it's, I mean, cause it's almost, it's, it seems like a high number given the number of weeks closed, but it's really such, we're hit heavily by those sorts of things, so. Um, the number of public, inter the use of the computers um, was 20,963. Um, the number of Wi-Fi was 9,615 and number of reference transactions. So those are the transactions recorded at the children's desk and at the first floor reference desk, but not at the circulation uh, desk, um, was 28,980. Um, the previous year was 38,780. So it was a drop of like 10,000. Um, you know, that's just kind of an interesting number. Um, the number of children's programs we held was 200, which is remarkable considering we were closed for a whole quarter. Um, number of children's virtual programs, so those videos, those nutmeg talks, um, was 50. We did 50 of those from March to June, which is an insane amount. Um, Total of in-person children's program, the number of attendance was 5,055. And again, this is a decrease from the previous year, but 5,000, that's, I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm considering a lot of our numbers are in the spring for some of this. Um, uh, let's see, the number of, the total number of programs, and that includes all age levels, was 344 and attendance was 6,000. Previously, it was 448 and the attendance was at over 11,000. So we, you know, we lost in the last quarter, but 
you know. Um, the number, oh, going back to the virtual program, we had 50 virtual children's programs. They were viewed 6,471 times. And that is just, you know, and, and you, it, it, you know, Facebook does it different than YouTube, how they count a view, how they define a view, how they count a view. Um, but I think most public libraries got on board of how they were going to capture that number. And that's, that was for, um, you know, number of views for children. That's just crazy. And that's views. That's not number of people gathered around the computer. So yeah, that was interesting. And um, the last number that I was going to just quickly share um, was we had 261,000, and this is the, how the state counts the numbers, um, 261,475 um, circulation of all kinds. So that includes physical, uh, the collection, the print, the non-print, it includes um, our electronic um, number of circ, and that's down about 53,000 from the previous year. Um, so there, there was a drop, but we're in the top, um, I think we're at this, I think at least not, I don't have the exact ranking yet for this particular report, but the previous report, we were number 23 in circulation in the state. Um, and so we're, you know, we beat out some locations are, you know, who's closer to us in the area, um, in terms of numbers would be um, Glastonbury. We switch on and off with Newington from time to time. Um, West Hartford's in a category all its own. Uh, the library that circulates the most is Greenwich. Um, you know, the Fairfield and Stanford, you know, um, there's those locations are circulating not quite a million items, but just under a million items. And we're, you know, we're in this range. Usually uh, we're about 300,000. Uh, but we're we're below that this this last year. So, uh, but I, I think that's pretty good considering there's 160 public libraries and we're in the top 23 for circulation. So, um, not so bad. Um, so those are the you know and and we'll be using some of these statistics um, for advocacy purposes, obviously. Um, and we you know we compare it to you know, to other Connecticut libraries, but we also compare it to the national average, you know, as well. So any questions about that? And Hannah, again, I'll get you all of this. So you, yeah, so it's not a headache. <laughs> so um, we are getting ready for budget season. I had my first initial meeting with um, the town manager to discuss um, the first step in our process as department heads is the capital improvement projects. Um, and I indi indicated that I didn't anticipate putting in an ask really for anything specific. We have projects. We would like um, the citizen, uh, the capital improvement advisory committee um, to put be willing to put money aside um, and to build um, I don't know if that's going to be happening in the next year or two, or if they're just trying to complete out projects. And I know um, generally there's a budget of, you know, $900,000 for, you know, 90 great projects <laughs> with the library has a handful. Uh, but I know, correct me if I'm wrong, Amy, they did cut, um, the council did um, cut money from capital improvement projects, I believe a couple hundred thousand at least. Yes, it was not. Um, usually they get three to $5 million worth of requests for $900,000 worth of actual funding. Um, but this year they did cut that uh, by a, a couple hundred thousand dollars. You're absolutely right. And it's interesting, we're not hearing you ask for your air chiller <laughs> this yeah. year isn't that nice <laughs> yes <laughs> and i and i do advocate even though like an air chiller or something like that is a project that technically is under physical services if it affects the library 
I show up and I back up that other town department <laughs> um, head and go, we absolutely need X, Y, and Z and, and, and to support that because, you know, um, but again, there's just so many great projects that every department wants to do and that would benefit the re Weathersfield residents. Um, but again, it, you know, it's money and there's only so much, you know, everything's a priority, nothing's a priority, you know, so it's difficult. Um, this year we were granted, um, and it was small because it's part of a bigger ask, um, is for RFID just to have the Windows 10 upgrade. And it's like seven or $8,000 and we were given that money. So, you know, nearly every year, the library has received something either for security cameras or, you know, RFID or, um, you know, chiller, <laughs> something for our air conditioning. Um, so, you know, it is, you know, we, we do okay. Um, but I do have my list of projects. I'll share that at the next board meeting. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to, be, I'm just realistic as, as much as can be. Um, but, and they're kind enough to let me go, generally go first um, at those meetings uh, where I advocate and go, just give me all the money and I'll finish out my project for the next year. So, um, but it's a competition that the department heads have with our internally. Um, I believe in a very important project for the library as well as town that they have started the work for and whether this is under capital improvement or um, capital non-recurring money is the voice over IP money. Um, any money to set aside, that would help us tremendously. Our phone system townwide, um, at least on the town hall and the library, and, the, and I, I can't speak for the police, but physical services, it's 20 years dated. I mean, it's just terrible. Um, and you can hardly hear people half the time you're on the phone. Um, ours is also used as an intercom system <laughs> for the announcements within the library. So it's like a public safety issue as well. Um, so the sooner we can get voice over IP, um, the better because people are calling and spending staff time. What are your hours? Are you open? When they could just hit one um, or speak with children's, but it's all being routed to the front desk, the circulation desk. And that just isn't good. And I, I have... Um, I'm a big proponent of that. My understanding is that project is underway. It's taking them a while to get, for Mike O'Neill to get perhaps some of the infrastructure that's needed for that to be in place. And I see Amy nodding her head. So does that uh, sounds correct. Um, and now my understanding is the first numbers to go are our fax numbers. And so I'm, once I have a new fax number, <laughs> like I, it'll, it'll be good to go. Um, I'll know that the project is real on my end. Um, so, but hopefully they'll, they'll do that. Our hand sensor, hand, hand sets are falling apart. I get notices from AT&T. We literally cannot support you. These products are done. Um, you know, so you have a backup maintenance plan, but we can't, we can't support half of it is what AT&T, you know, will tell me. So, um, but I, I do believe that, um, uh, John Eichner and, and Mike O'Neill are on it. So I, I remain optimistic and that would be a huge boon for the library and, and it would save staff. I mean, you know, sometimes I have to staff two people at the desk, but one of it's to answer the phone and questions that can be answered with a, you know, a message um, that we just don't have set up. Uh, the next step in the budget process, um, as far as I'm aware, what it's been historically is a revenue projection so that'll be interesting because um, whatever I projected for last year, I mean, we have just been waving fine. I mean, we just, you know, we put books in quarantine. We can't charge people fines if they return them on time. So, um, and then we have automatic renewal, which will affect. So I'm not sure what I'm going to come up with that, but that's one of the next steps. And that's a projection I work on for Mike O'Neill. Um, then we work on our budget narratives, um, which is in that big report. Um, and again, we'll need to set up a finance committee meetings to start meeting in January. Um, and we can have FIA as well, but then to start talking about the upcoming budget. Um, at some point, I'll um, be trying to meet with um, Michael Rell to get his sense of what, you know, maybe his priorities are and, and reach out to him and go, what are you kind of thinking? What are you anticipating? 
Um, and even, and Gary will also be important uh, part of that process as well, the town manager. So then again, in February, um, we'll have the, the finance committee meet as well again. Um, and then generally the library votes um, is scheduled to vote for what we call the preliminary preliminary approved library budget that then gets uh, forwarded um, as part of Gary's uh, documents and the budget narrative to town council. Um, so again, our vote, you guys' vote is just for the preliminary approval of the library board budget. Um, but I think, you know, hopefully I can you know, it, it anticipate what, what council's looking for um, and to keep the numbers, uh, you know, as, as flat as a pancake, if at all possible. I don't know if there, there's cuts. Um, I don't know, Amy, it's perhaps too early. If you have any sense, no, it's a little, no. yeah. We haven't, we as a council, we haven't discussed anything yet. And I don't know what um, the mayor and town manager have discussed. Yeah, so you know, that's kind of, yeah, that's where we're at. And it's a little, it's still a little early in the process, um, you know. So that's, any questions about the upcoming budget season? Okay. Um, as far as programming, um, we've had uh, children's programming. We just wrapped up our adventures around the world. We have had over 70 participants for that. Uh, prior to Thanksgiving, we had the turkey task at grab and go bags. Um, and now they're making up some holiday bags um, and getting ready for the winter reading program, which will start in January, our normal winter reading program. Um, so that's what Children's is, is working on. Um, teen programming um, coming up, they have a felt ribbon candy. Um, and uh, it's not real candy, which I was disappointed to learn. It's felt <laughs> and ribbon. Um, so it's thrown some of us uh, fans of sugar off a little bit. And then they're doing a do-it-yourself uh, sugar scrub of some sort. Um, and, and so they're doing that. Uh, adult programming tonight. Um, look at Hannah. She's like, I can't believe I'm taking minutes. Tonight is sweet potato gnocchi, and if anybody- I'm just mad, I miss, I miss tonight's gnocchi making. <laughs> and if anybody, yeah. it tells you. <laughs> um, Thursday night, we have over 60 people between Weatherfield and Berlin signed up for um, Elizabeth. Oh, she's one of our public service managers. She hosts a program, and this is the third time she'll have done it in Weathersfield, of Cut the Cord. So, um, and she's, yeah, so if you're interested, <laughs> um, she's, she's got over 60 participants at this point, which I'm like, that's a lot um, in a Zoom meeting, but um, it's good information to be able to pass along. And so um, she's got that coming up. And then we're going to uh, have the final session of the job series. And again, that's a, a collaborative um, a collaboration between the Rocky Hill Library and the Berlin Peck Library. And it's going to be online job search and resume submittal. And that's next Monday. Um, so that's that's it for program. Any questions about programming or comments? If anybody's attended anything? Well, you know, the Grandfields seem to be attending them all now. So um, not the sugar scrub, though, for the teenagers. They were like, no way, Jose. Um, but I just, I just, I just think it should be noted if any of you, right, we're all, I've said this to Martha and Brooke the other day, but we're always so busy that we don't have a tendency to sort of go to these programs that the library offers, like, right, because we're maybe, we have a work meeting, or we have another meeting, or we have to maybe move children around, or we have pets, or, or, or whatnot, right, we all have a busy life, and so it's been kind of nice, I think, for my family to sort of, why we're not doing these other things, we've been participating in the library program. So they've been great. I know, I mean, I'm, I jokingly, we are bummed that we missed tonight's program, but we have the ingredients and we'll get a Zoom link to try it again. So, but thank you, Brooke, to you and your staff for offering all of them. And we're trying to be as creative and as smart as possible and not just offer it to offer it, but have it be meaningful and 
of quality. Um, and we're always making sure that we're trying not to repeat maybe perhaps what they're offering at Parks and Rec. Um, you know, and this is meant to initially get people into it. It's not meant to into any, you know, sweet potato gnocchi or, you know, felt ribbon candy, whatever it is, it's meant to be an introduction to things as opposed to a full class. Um, so, um, but no, they've been pleased. And um, we're just really pleased that we're able to do some of this collaboratively with local libraries. Um, sometimes we have overlap of patrons and um, it, it's helped us, um, if we're sharing those type of resources a little bit, it, it is helpful to, um, we can get a better quality program if we're doing, we're, we're doing that as well. So um, the election, uh, which we had since the last, um, uh, the last meeting, um, the elections uh, part where they did absentee ballot counting in the library, that went off without a hitch. Um, they came in, they did their thing. Um, they were here very early in the morning. <laughs> I was not here. Um, but many thanks to the elections office and the town hall staff and the physical services staff, especially the physical services staff, who got us back to our business quickly and we could reopen the children's uh, room for everyone. Um, but it wasn't a problem and there was a lot of people involved and there were observers in the room and I loved it. I thought that was <laughs> I'm still like high on that. I still think it was just fabulous to be a small part of that process. So I was, was, I was there. I was one of the uh, absentee ballot counters. So I was there early in the morning. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was in bed. Yeah. Like that was a little <laughs> too early for me. <laughs> and my, and my husband and I were there. It was, it was early. <laughs> but it was no small part. It was something like five to 6,000 absentee ballots were, were counted that day. It was a huge. Um, effort and um, yeah, I did. I did one of the districts. We had over fourteen hundred. So yeah. yeah, it was it was. A, I couldn't believe the amount of absentee ballots that came in. It it was really interesting. I think seeing the news after about how ballots came in across the country because we really it was like a little microcosm of what we had. I'm sure. I'm sure. You, I don't know if you have the same experience watching the news, Amanda. After it's like, yeah, there were a lot of ballots. Yes, and <laughs> there we were. were. You know. We had, um, we're fortunate that ours, you know, we had the space and, and you know, but you can imagine these larger precincts where it could pretend, and you didn't, if you hadn't been allowed to start early, right. it would take and a it, long it time. And it went very smooth. So yeah. they were expecting us to be there for much longer than we were, but we were able to to power through them all and, and get them all, all done. So everybody did a great job. It was. Yay. I'll play host democracy. democracy. <laughs> um, so that was election. Um, and uh, as far as technology, I um, just had my, uh, you know, kind of year in annual check in with Novus. Um, and I meet with them more frequently, but this is kind of the, you know, we're talking about upcoming projects. And so um, some of the projects we discussed for 2021 is we're really looking at cyber awareness training. Um, for the staff, um, which is important. And I know it's something that the town hall offers. So I'm gonna kind of do a comparison of, you know, what we really do, but, you know, it is something that is increasingly more and more important. Um, we're looking, they're gonna be helping us with the self-check uh, Windows 10 upgrade, helping with that process. It'll enable us to decommission a very old, teeny tiny server that keeps something functioning, uh, but we'll be able to decommission that. Um, we're looking to um, convert to uh, Google. Uh, right now we're on network solutions. We're looking to move over to uh, Gmail, um, the Board of Ed's on it, um, Town Hall's on it, um, but we're looking to go over to the Google Enterprise Suite basically. Um, and so that's another project coming up in the, in the next year. Um, we are looking, I, I got permission, and I mentioned this at the last meeting, I finally got permission to decommission some very old equipment um, that we're now gonna have basically destroyed or recycled, whatever they do. Um, but we need to get it out of the building because it's taking up so much room in one of our storage closets and, and we're bursting at the seams. 
as well as um, our server closet, which is not where we want to have store anything. Um, but there's a ton of dated equipment um, that we're looking to get rid of. Um, and so that's, you know, we're looking to get that out the door. Um, and, and just because I have so many public PCs out of commission right now due to social distance requirements, um, this is a good time to kind of get that process moving. Um, and I cannot, I don't have to, my public computers that I currently have on the floor are all Windows 10. The ones that are not on the floor that are just sitting off to the side because of social distancing requirements. Um, we need to upgrade to Windows 10, but I can focus on a different project because that'll be a while before I start adding back in all of our computer equipment for the public to use. Um, so, it, in, you know, whenever you can find a silver lining, you know, and literally getting material out, you know, getting dated equipment out of the building, that's like going to be, let's clear house and get it out. So um, we are looking to do that as well. Um, we're looking to further enhance our current Wi-Fi um, that already goes into the parking lot. We're looking to put in a long range um, component uh, or, or um, like a longer range router that would go further than it currently is because we're making no effort to hit the parking lot at this point, but it, you can pick up our signal in the parking lot. But we're looking to make sure, can we cover you know, as much of the parking lot as we possibly can? So that is something that we are looking to do is some outdoor Wi-Fi. However, this is not going to be a part of um, the Connecticut Education Network's um, Everyone Learns Project. And so, um, I, you know, I talked with um, the network engineer at the Board of Ed, talked with Mike O'Neill, talked with them. Um, you know, that signal, um, there's a lot of, it, it's, it's happening extremely fast, that particular project. Um, I'm getting a lot of different, you're, you're filtered, someone else you talk to, you're not filtered. Um, you have control, you have no control, just a lot of questions. And I think this will be um, really great, Amy, <laughs> at the state level, um, advocacy and, and um, you know, but it's, would be really great to have um, with the governor's office, especially um, the Office of Strategic Initiatives who's pushing through all this coronavirus money. Um, and it's happening so fast that the people implementing don't even have time to really respond and whatnot. Um, and I, and we, I feel like I had enough information to make the decision um, for this particular project. And I have to, to see Ian's credit, they've been one of the more transparent pieces of the coronavirus money for public libraries. So credit to them. Um, but I just feel that we can provide this on our own for minimal cost, um, knowing that I'm not really upgrading certain some of my hardware money. I can spend it on another piece of equipment and just keep it under our terms and our control. Um, and, and they wanted to, you know, install something outdoors, you know, um, and, and so, and then they, they were like, it'll go the length of a football field. And I'm like, I don't need a signal into the neighborhood. <laughs> maybe on, well, maybe I was wrong. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> depends what street you live on. Right. <laughs> so, um, but I feel like we, we really can serve, um, you know, just offer a better signal, you know, with very little effort, because we don't even try to provide the signal so much in the front room of the library, and we know it's already extending out to the parking lot. So to just make that better, um, I think is a good thing for our public. So, um, and the other coronavirus money, um, I know that um, there is, a, you know, a, there is a level of frustration for those of us who did not, apparently were not eligible for the money, Weathersfield in particular, and even those who were told they are receiving the money, there is a, a, a level of frustration with the lack of transparency with the coronavirus money um, coming down from the, the governor's office. So 
Um, but I do think it's great that they're including public libraries in general. That's really, really important. Um, but the rush to get the money spent, it's a little, it, you know, like some fine tuning could have been done, but maybe there's a federal guideline for the money that they have to spend it by December 31st. And, you know, they found out in October they had them. I don't know. Um, so that's, that's where we are. Any questions about any of the technology? Okay. Um, and the last thing I had as part of the director's report is an ask from the friends. And um, I would like to ask permission um, from the library board um, for a thousand, for me to ask permission, for me to ask the friends um, for $1,000 to help support the library's take and make kits and grab and go bags. Um, these are self-directed or video directed activities or crafts and it would be for all age levels. Um, some recent examples include around the world bags, Tetris magnets, watercolor cards, chocolate pop tarts, gingerbread houses, holiday cards, spectacular Halloween bags, candy turkeys, and I could just go on and on and on and on. And we have been using um, our programming money uh, for this, as well as when we have an instructor led, you know, event as well, like the job series, we're paying someone to, to host that three series. Um, but I do think it is something uh, that the friends hopefully would be thrilled with supporting um, and that they can brand. Um, and so we're asking for about a thousand dollars to help. Um, we sometimes are finding that um, we're running out of supplies and we, we have to limit and we can't really predict at this point in time, which one's gonna be a huge success and oh, we got that one correct. And we knew that 20 people were gonna come for this grab and go kit. Um, so the dynamics a little bit uh, different. So um, then it is for an in-person uh, program. Um, but yeah, so that I would like to ask the library board for me to have permission to ask the friends formally for that money. It's a thousand dollars and it is for all ages. All right, so uh, can I have a motion to approve the request for $1,000? Yes, um, I'll, I'll move to uh, permit Brooke to make a request to the friends for, is it $1,000, Brooke? That, correct. Okay, uh, to help support the take and make kits or, or the grab and go bags. Correct. Is there a second? second. I'll second. I'll write my own name. Whoever <laughs> you decide, Hannah. Um, okay, uh, let's go. We'll go around. Uh, George. Uh, yes. Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Great, Terry. Yes. Amanda. Yes. Uh, I'm a yes. Hannah. Yes. And Lori. Yes. Great. Right. Thank you. And thank you to the friends in advance. Tell you know convey how much we appreciate yeah as and always their support. Yes. yeah so i'll hopefully. email them the request and hopefully they'll say yes great um, okay. and that's all i have for the director's report okay great thank you um we do have an update from outreach i don't know brooke if you want to just give a quick or uh, the other night uh, I, maybe I'll, I'll just do a quick um thanks very much to hannah who had reached out to weathersfield life um, we did have an interview this week with a reporter from Weathersfield Life. Um, Hannah, Brooke, and I participated. Was it Monday? Was it last Monday? It was last Monday. It was Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, I'm lost. All right, it was a week ago, and um, they. Um, it was. Uh, it was a great. Um, you know, kind of far-reaching interview about um, where we have come. Brooke talked a lot about where the library board has um, come over the last several months, the challenges that we faced and how um, we're, we're coming up with a plan to have um, a, um, to make, you know, to be able to roll out in a way that we don't have to pull back on. 
Um, so hopefully we'll get, um, I know we're going to get a, a nice article about that. I don't, is that going to be, it'll probably not be maybe the January issue. I'm trying to think when it'll be the I December. It might even. must be the January one. So, so Does that's something now. I think it just came. Oh, yeah. So that'll, that's ahead. Um, I know Hannah had reached out to, um, you also reached out to Rare Reminder. And so hopefully we'll co come around on something with them. And um, any other updates, Brooke, on? Um, we did, uh, we um, believe we may have a firefighter set up to read a children's um, book on video, we're not sure. So we, we have been working on that. Um, the staff are, are trying to put something together to post videos of, of residents with their favorite books um, and to say this is, you know, uh, something that our favorite book. And, and we are looking, uh, and, and just so that um, people are aware that, that committees in town have started to meet or commissions in town have started to meet and the library is always trying to be present at those meetings whenever possible. And so, for example, I had two staff last night attend the Social Justice Coalition so that we're aware of kind of at least what's going on and if we um, can provide support to that or not. Um, uh, we've been attending the Youth Advisory Board um, and the Veterans Commission. Um, I haven't, uh, unfortunately, I have not been to a recent um, Chamber of Commerce meeting. I haven't been able to, to attend that, but we're still trying to be out and about virtually uh, in the community whenever um, possible. Um, and we are, I'm looking to have another meeting scheduled in December so that I can talk with the committee about a potential outdoor project um, that I want to bring to the committee first before we bring it to the full board. And hopefully we can schedule that for sometime in December. Yeah, so um, we have a governance meeting a week of in two weeks from tomorrow night. So what do, what do we think about next week? It's, um, uh, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. Um, Amanda, I know Amanda, Hannah had joined for the last one. Peter was there. We can come back around to him, hopefully. I don't know if anyone for, else is trying to outreach. join or able to. For outreach? Yeah, outreach. Yeah. So I, I like Tuesday better than Wednesday. That's my own two cents, though. Amanda, like, what would Tuesday? What, what time? I really open that day. Yeah, All me right. too. I have a, I have a, a PTO meeting starting at 5.30. So it probably goes to like 6.30. Six, or we don't do seven? What do you? I can do seven. Do yeah. Seven, do work seven on Tuesday the 8th. Does that work? Yeah. Sounds great. Okay. I don't think we have to, it won't be too, too long. And I don't think it's going to be very long at all. Okay. All right. So Tuesday the 8th, uh, in case anyone else wants to join, 7 p.m. Um, on Tuesday the 8th. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, and then um, governance um, also met, and George is uh, taking the lead on chairing the governance committee. So, you want to give us a quick? Well, yeah, we met and and talked <clears throat> about sort of a strategy for approaching the revision of the policies, and that will that process will begin uh, on the fifteenth. Uh, and the idea is for Brooke and, and staff to uh, select the policies to be revised and present those, you know, at, at the governance uh, committee meeting. And it, it, it's also, we thought we would encourage anybody who wants to participate in that process to come to those committee meetings, uh, which hopefully will avoid going into overly great detail at, at the regular board meetings. Uh, you know, if we can work out the language, get some general agreement, uh, the hope is we could then present those to the board uh, uh, without needing extensive discussion. We certainly welcome any comments and discussion, but if you want to, the place to do that, I think is, is going to be the governance committee. 
And so at the next meeting, which I'll send to the entire board, um, the meeting invite, we're going to be working on the tutoring and proctoring policy. Um, and so those are the next two policies that we're looking at specifically. Is it the 16th or the 15th? I thought it was the 16th. Yeah. George, what do you have? So today, no, the 16th. I'm, I was thinking oh, sorry. today first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the 16th. So it's Wednesday and that one's at 6 p.m. Right. Great. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks. Thanks again, George, for taking the lead on that. Um, all right. We're, we're going to go into an executive session. Does anyone have anything else for the... Uh, Anything else, any comments, questions on governance or outreach? I, I kind of skipped past that part. Okay. Um, thank you, Amy. Thank you, Brooke. I'm gonna make, we'll, we'll uh, do, do I have an, a motion to go into executive session? And then we'll turn the camera off. Motion. Thanks, Terry. Second. Second. Lori. Uh, Lori, we'll start with you. All in favor. Yes. George. Aye. Mary. Aye. Terry. Yes. Amanda. Yes. I'm a yes, Hannah. Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. And um, thank you. Thank you, Amy, very yep, thank much. Thank you for everything. See you soon. Bye bye. Okay. Take care, Amy. Holiday. Best of luck. Congratulations. Congratulations, Amy. So I'm going to pause the recording now. Okay, I think we have come out of <laughs> we have come out of executive session, and I do believe we are recording. Um, and uh, I'd like to uh, ask if there's a motion related to um, compensation for uh, library director Brooke Perry. Who wants to make a motion? Yeah, I'll move that. Uh... Uh, we grant an in to increase of 2% of the director's salary uh, retroactive to July 1st of this year. Second. Thanks, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody. Just pick. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, we'll start. Amanda. Uh, all in, we'll go all in favor. Amanda. Yes. Uh, Terry. Yes. Lori. Yes. Mary. Yeah. George? Yes. Anna? Yes. And I'm also in favor. Okay. Motion passes. Um, that's it. So anyone have anything else for the uh, for the order? So we have um, we have our outreach meeting next week, governance the week after. And I know I, we didn't say it during the meeting, but we do need to have a finance meeting, which we'll have in January. So we'll just We'll talk to Andrew Salik, who is our um, finance guy, about what might work for him, and then we'll put some group. We'll put some dates out. So, okay. all right. Well, thank you, everyone. Hope you all have a wonderful holiday. We have to motion to adjourn. Oh, jeez! I was just going to leave. I was going <laughs> to turn it off. All right. Can I? Anna wasn't going to let. Jeez! Well, Anna's got a blank spot on her page. <laughs> Not at my first meeting. I got to follow it right. All right, <laughs> Hannah, make a motion. <laughs> a motion to adjourn the meeting. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Oh, I think Mary got it. Okay. <laughs> I'm waiting. All right. Mary. Mary, can you? Mary, yeah. are you in favor? George. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, Amanda. <laughs> yes. Mary. Yeah. Terry. Yes. yes. Lori. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm in favor too. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great, great night. Great holiday. Holidays. Have a nice holiday. Bye. Happy holidays, everybody. Bye, everybody. Be safe. Take care. Be safe.